dedication and foreword of rhymes of a red cross man this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by larry wilson rhymes of a red cross man by robert w service dedication to the memory of my brother lieutenant albert service canadian infantry killed in action france august nineteen sixteen forward i've tinkered at my bits of rhymes in weary woeful waiting times in doleful hours of battle din ere yet they brought the wounded in through vigils of the fateful night in lousy barns by candlelight in dugouts sagging and a flood on stretchers stiff and bleared with blood by ragged grove by ruined road by hearths accursed where love abode by broken altars blackened shrines i've tinkered at my bits of rhymes i've solaced me with scraps of song the desolated ways along through sickly fields all shrapnel sown and meadows reaped by death alone by blazing cross and splintered spire by headless virgin in the mire by gardens gashed amid their bloom by gutted grave by shattered tomb beside the dying and the dead where rocket green and rocket red in trembling pools of poising light with flowers of flame festoon the night ah me by what dark ways of wrong i've cheered my heart with scraps of song so here's my sheaf of war one verse and some is bad and some is worse and if at times i curse a bit you needn't read that part of it for through it all like horror runs the red resentment of the guns and you yourself would mutter when you took the things that once were men and sped them through the zone of hate to where the dripping surgeons wait and wonder too if in god's sight war ever ever can be right yet may it not be crime and war but effort misdirected are and if there's good in war and crime there may be in my bits of rhyme my songs from out the slaughter mill so take or leave them as you will the call france august first nineteen fourteen far and near high and clear hark to the call of war over the gorse and the golden dells ringing and swinging of clamorous bells praying and saying of wild farewells war 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 high and low all must go hark to the shout of war leave to the women the harvest yield gird ye men for the sinister field a sabre instead of a scythe to wield war red war rich and poor lord and boor hark to the blast of war tinker and tailor and millionaire actor and triumph and priest and prayer comrades now in the hell out there sweep to the fire of war prince and page a sot and sage hark to the roar of war poet professor and circus clown chimney sweeper and fop of the town into the pot and be melted down into the pot of war women all hear the call the pitiless call of war look your last on your dearest ones brothers and husbands fathers sons swift they go to the ravenous guns the gluttonous guns of war everywhere thrill the air the maniac bells of war there will be little of sleeping to-night there will be wailing and weeping to-night death's red sickle is reaping to-night war 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 end of forward the fool by robert w service read for librivox dot org by joshua cabana but it isn't playing the game he said and he slammed his books away the latin and the greek i've got in my head will do for a duller day rubbish i cried the bugle's call isn't for lads from school do you think he'd listen oh not at all so i called him a fool a fool now there's his dog by his empty bed and the flute he used to play, and his favorite bat. But Dick, he's dead, somewhere in France, they say. Dick with his rapture of song and sun, Dick of the yellow hair, Dicky whose life had but begun, carrion cold out there. 
Look at his prizes all in a row. Surely a hint of fame. Now he's finished with. Nothing to show. Doesn't it seem a shame? Look from the window. All you see was to be his one day. Forest and furrow, lawn and lee, and he goes and chucks it away. Chucks it away to die in the dark. Somebody saw him fall. Part of him mud, part of him blood, the rest of him not at all. And yet I'll bet he was never afraid, and he went as the best of them go. For his hand was clenched on his broken blade, and his face was turned to the foe. And I called him a fool. Oh, how blind was I! And the cup of my grief abrim. Will glory, O England, ever die, so long as we've lads like him? So long as we've fond and fearless fools, who, spurning fortune and fame, turn out to be the rallying cry of their schools, just bent on playing the game. A fool! Ah, no! He was more than wise. His was the proudest part. He died with the glory of faith in his eyes, and the glory of love in his heart. And though there's never a grave to tell, nor a cross to mark his fall, thank God we know that he batted well in the last great game of all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Volunteer by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org By Joshua Cabana Says I, My country calls, well, let it call. I grins politely and declines with thanks. Go, let them plaster every blighted wall, ears one they don't stampede into the ranks. Them politicians with their greasy ways, them empire grabbers fight for em? No fear! I've seen this mess a-comin' from the days of Algesirius and Agadir. I felt me passion rise and swell, but what the l, Bill? What the l? Says I, my country, mine. I like their cheeks. Me mud bespattered by the cars they drive. What makes my measly thirty bob a week, and sweats red blood to keep meself alive? Fight for the right to slave that they may spend them in their mansions. Me ear in my slum. No, let them fight. What's something to defend? But me, I've nothing. Let the Kaiser come. And so I cusses hard and well. But what the L, Bill? What the L? Says I. If they would do the decent thing and shield the misses and the little uns. Why, even I might shout God save the king and face the chances of them hungry guns. But we've got three, another on the way. It's that what makes me snarl and set me jor. The wife and nippers. What of em, I say? If I gets knocked out in this blasted war? Gets proper busted by a shell. But! What the L, Bill? What the L? Aye. What the L's the use of all this talk? Today, some boys in blue was passing me, and some of them ad no legs to walk, and some of them ad no eyes to see. And, well, I couldn't look em in the face. And so I'm going, going to declare... I'm under forty-one and take me place to face the music with the bunch out there. A fool, you say? Maybe you're right. I'll have no peace unless I fight. I cease to think. I only know I've got to go, Bill. Got to go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Convalescent by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org Bye. Joshua Cabana So I walked among the willows very quietly all night. There was no moon at all, at all, no timid star alight. There was no light at all, at all. I went from tree to tree, and I called him as his mother called, but he never answered me. Oh, I called him all the night time, as I walked the wood alone. And I listened and I listened, but I never heard a moan. Then I found him at the dawnin, when the sorry sky was red. I was looking for the livin, but I only found the dead. Sure I know that it was Seamus by the silver cross he wore, but the bugles they were callin, and I heard the cannon roar. Oh, I had no time to tarry, so I said a little prayer, and I clasped his hands together, and I left him lyin there. Now the birds are singin, singin, and I'm home in Donegal. And it's springtime, 
and I'm thinking that I only dreamed it all. I dreamed about the evil wood, all crowded with its dead, where I knelt beside me brother when the battle dawn was red, where I prayed beside me brother ere I went to fight anew. Such dreams as these are evil dreams. I can't believe it's true. Where all is love and laughter, sure it's hard to think of loss. But mother's saying nothing, and she clasps a silver cross. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Man from Athabasca by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Oh, the wife she tried to tell me that t'was nothing but the thrumming of a woodpecker a-rapping on the hollow of a tree, and she thought that I was fooling when I said it was the drumming of the mustering of legions, and t'was calling unto me, t'was calling me to pull my freight and hop across the sea. And a mending of my fish nets, sure I started up in wonder, for I heard a savage roaring, and t'was coming from afar. Oh, the wife she tried to tell me that t'was only summer thunder, and she laughed a bit sarcastic when I told her it was war. T'was the chariots of battle where the mighty armies are. Then down the lake came half breed Tom with russet sail a flying, and the word he said was war again, so what was I to do? Oh, the dogs they took to howling, and the missus took to crying, as I flung my silver foxes in the little birch canoe. Yes, the old girl stood a blubbing till an island hid the view. Says the factor, Mike, you're crazy. They have soldier men aplenty. You're as grizzled as a badger, and you're sixty year or so. But I haven't missed a scrap, says I, since I was one and twenty. And shall I miss the biggest? You can bet your whiskers no. So I sold my furs and started. And that's eighteen months ago. For I joined the Foreign Legion, and they put me for a starter in the trenches of the Argonne, with the Bosch a step away. And the partner on my right hand was an Apache from Montmartre. On my left there was a millionaire from Pittsburgh, USA. Poor fellow. They collected him in bits the other day. But I'm spryer than a chipmunk, save a touch of the lumbago, and they calls me old Methuselah, and blags me all the day. I'm their exhibition sniper, and they work me like a dago, and laugh to see me plug a bosch a half a mile away. Oh, I hold the highest record in the regiment, they say. And at night they gather round me, and I tell them of my roaming in the country of the crepuscule beside the frozen sea, where the muskox runs unchallenged, and the caribou goes homing, and they sit like little children, just as quiet as can be men of every crime and color how they hearken unto me and i tell them of the fur land of the trump line and the paddle of secret rivers loitering that no one will explore and i tell them of the ranges of the pack strap and the saddle and they fill their pipes in silence and their eyes beseech for more while above the star shells fizzle and the high explosives roar and i tell of lakes fish haunted where the big bull moose are calling, and forests still as sepulchres with never trail or track, and valleys packed with purple gloom, and mountain peaks appalling. And I tell them of my cabin on this shore at Fond du Lac, and I find myself a thinking, sure I wish that I was back. So I brag of beer and beaver while the batteries are roaring, and the fellows on the firing steps are blazing at the foe and i yarn a fur and feather when the marmites are a-soaring and they listen to my stories seven poilu in a row seven lean and lousy poilu with their cigarettes aglow and i tell them when it's over how i'll hike for athabasca and those seven greasy poilu they are crazy to go to and i'll give the wife the pickle tub i promised and i'll ask her the price of mink and martin and the run of caribou and i'll get my traps in order and I'll start to work anew. For I've had my fill of fighting, and I've seen a nation scattered, and an army swung to slaughter, and a river red with gore, and a city all a-smolder, and, as if it really mattered, for the lake is yonder dreaming, and my cabin's on the shore, and the dogs are leaping madly, 
and the wife is singing gladly and i'll rest in athabasca and i'll leave it nevermore end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Red Retreat by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Nigel Fisher. Tramp, tramp, the grim road, the road from Mons to Wipers. I've hammered out this ditty with me bruised and bleeding feet. Tramp, tramp, the dim road, we didn't have no pipers. And bellies that was hollow was the drums we had to beat. Tramp, tramp, the bad road, the bits of kiddies crying there, the fell birds are flying there. The hours is all aflame. Tramp, tramp, the sad road, the pals I left a lying there. Red there and dead there. Oh, blimey, it's a shame. A singing, who's your lady friend? We started out from Arva. A singing till our throats was dry. We didn't care a hang. The Frenchies, how they lined the way and slung us their palaver. And all we knowed to answer was the one word, vang. They gave us booze and caparel and cheered for us like crazy and all the pretty gals was out to kiss us as we passed and how they went dotty when we owled the massa lazy oh gawd them was the happy days the days too good to last we started out for god knows where we started out a roaring we hollered here we are again and struth but we was dry the dust was gumming up our ears and how the sweat was pouring the road was long the sun was like a brazier in the sky we wondered where the uns was, we wasn't long a wandering, for down a scruff of hillside they rushes like a flood, and then, ah, oh, twas music heavenly, our batteries are thundering, and arms and legs went soaring in the fountain of their blood. For on they came like bee swarms, a hooching and a singing, we pumped the bullets into em, we couldn't miss a shot, but though we mowed em down like grass, like grass they was a springing, and all our hands was blistered for our rifles was so hot we roared with battle fury and we lammed the stuffing out of em and then we fixed our bayonets and we spitted em like meat you should have heard em beggars squeal you should have seen the rout of em and how we cussed and wondered when the word came retreat retreat that was the hell of it it fair upset our habits a running from their blighters over half the roads of france a scurrying before em like a load of blurry rabbits and knowing we could smash em if we just had half the chance retreat that was the bitter bit a limping and a blundering all day and night a hoofing it and sleeping on our feet a fighting rearguard actions for a bit of rest and wondering if sugar beets or mangles was the wholesomest to eat oh yes there isn't many left that started out so cheerily there was no bands a-playing and we had no automobiles our tummies they was oller and our heads was hanging wearily and if we stopped to light a fag the uns was on our heels that rotten road i can't forget the kids and mothers flying there the bits of barns a-blazing and the horrid sights i saw the stiffs that lined the wayside me own pals are lying there their faces covered over with a little heap of straw tramp tramp the red road the wicked bullets i'm in I've panted out this ditty with me hard breath. Tramp, tramp, the dread road, the boshes all are coming, the looting and the shooting and the shrieks of death. Tramp, tramp, the fell road, the mad horde pursuing there, and how we hurled it back again, them grim grey waves. Tramp, tramp, the hell road, the horror and the ruin there, the graves of me mateys there, the grim sour graves end of poem this recording is in the public domain the haggis of private mcphee by robert w service read for LibriVox.org by skip chorus I you heard what me old mother's posted to me? It fair makes me homesick, says Private McPhee. And what did she send ye, says Private McFun, as he cocked his rifle and bleased at a hun? A haggis, a haggis, says Private McPhee, the broadest big haggis I ever did see. And think, it's the morn when the fond memory turns to haggis and whiskey, the birthday of Burns. 
we maun find a dram then we kind a rest and the lads and we ha bairns nicked with the best be ready at sundown snapped sergeant mccall i want you two men for a listening patrol then private mcphee looked at private mcfun i'm thinking my lad we're confoundedly done then private mcfun looked at private mcphee i'm thinking old chap it's a half wit or spree but up spoke their crony wee willie mcnair just lay your bra haggis for me to prepare and as for the dram if i searched the camp roan we maun ha drappy to jist haud it down serin lads and think do the nicht it be black or the haggis that's waitin ye when ye get back my but it was waesome in naebody's land and it did they were rotten on every hand and the rockets like corpse candles haunted the sky and the winds of destruction went shuddering by there was skilpin of bullets and skirlin of shells and bringin of bombs and a toes and death knells but corryin down in a jack johnson hole little fash the twa men o the listenin patrol for sweeter than honey and bricked as a gem was the thought of the haggis that waited for them yet alas in our moments a sunniest cheer calamities often most cruelly near and while that we talked o their puddin divine the boshes below them were howkin o mine and while that we cracked o the feast they would hae the fuse it was burnin and burnin away then sudden a roar like a thunder o doom a hell leap o flame then the wish to the tomb how oh, jack are you hurted said private mcfun ay jordy they got me i'm fearin i'm done it's my leg i'm just thinkin it's off at the knee yet best gang and leave me said private mcfee oh leave ye i wanna said private mcfun and leave ye i canna for though i mit run it's na far i would gang it's no muckle i'd see i'm blinded and that's what's the matter with me then private mcphee sadly shake at his head if we bide here for long we'll be biden for dead and yet jordy lad i could gang weel content if i tasted that haggis me old mother sent that's droll says mcfun you've just speak it my mind oh i can it's a terrible thing to be blind and yet it's not that that embitters my lot it's missin the bra muckle haggis ye got for a while they were silent then up once again spake private mcphee though he whistled with pain and why should we miss it between you and me we've legs for to run and we've eyes for to see you lend me your shanks and i'll lend you me sicht and we'll baith a kite full of haggis this nick o oh, the sky it was dour like and dreepin a wee when private mcfun grup at private mcphee o oh, the glare it was filin and crashin the grun when private mcphee guided private mcfun keep clear o them corpses there may be no dead hold on there's a big muckle crater ahead look out there's a sap we'll be hay on a coop a star shell for god's sake doon lad on your dope bear off to your rick oh you're just doin fine before the nicht's finished on haggis we'll dine there was death and destruction on every hand there was havoc and horror and nobody's land and the shells bickered doon with a crump and a glare and the hameless wee bullets were dying in the air yet on they went staggerin corian down when the stutter and cluck o a maxim crept round and the legs o mcfun they were sturdy and stout and mcphee on his back kept a bonny lookout on on my brave lad we're not far fra the goal i can hear the bra swearin a sergeant mccall but strength has its limit and private mcfun wi a sob and a curse fell his length on the ground 
laughed and private mcphee shouted down in his ear just think of the haggis i smell it from here it's gushing with juice it's in the air it's steaming for us and we're just about there then private mcfun answers damn it old chap for the sake of that haggis i'll gang till i drap and he gets on his feet where a heave and a strain and onward he staggers in passion and pain and the flare and the glare and the fury increase till you'd think they'd just taken a hill on a lease and on they go reeling in pitiful plight and someone is shouting away on their right and someone is running and no can they hear a sound like a prayer and a sound like a cheer and swift through the crash and the flash of the din the lads of the highlands are bringing em in they're best sairly wounded but is it not droll how they rave about haggis says sergeant mccall when herplin along comes wee willie mcnair and they a wondered why he was greeting so sair and he said i just lifted it out of the pot and there it lay steaming and savoury hot when sudden i dooped at the flesh o a shell and it dropped on the haggis and dinged it to hell and oh but the lads were fur taken aback then sudden the order was passed to attack and up from the trenches like lions they leapt and on through the nick like a torrent they swept on on with their bayonets thirsting before on on till the foe with a rush and a roar and wild to the welkin their battle cry rang and down on the botches like tigers they sprang and there was not a man but had death in his ee for he thought of the haggis or private mcphee end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lark by robert w service read for LibriVox.org by joshua cabana from wrath red dawn to wrath red dawn the guns have brayed without abate and now the sick sun lies upon the bleared blood-boltered fields of hate as if it loathed to rise again how strange the hush yet sudden hark from yon downtrodden gold of grain the leaping rapture of a lark a fusillade of melody that sprays us from yon trench of sky a new amazing enemy we cannot silence though we try a battery on radiant wings that from yon gap of golden fleece hurls at us hopes of such strange things as joy and home and love and peace pure heart of song do you not know that we are making earth a hell or is it that you try to show life still is joy and all is well brave little wings ah not in vain you beat into that bit of blue lo we who pant in war's red rain lift shining eyes see heaven too end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Odyssey of Herbert Higgins by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Nigel Fisher Me and Ed and a stretcher Out on the neutral ground If there's one dead corpse, I'll betcha There's a hundred smelling around Me and Eddie O'Brien Both of the RAMC It's a hell of a night for a soul to take flight as Eddie remarks to me. Me and Ed crawling homeward, thinking our job is done. When sudden and clear, what do we hear? Owl of a wounded un. Gotta take him, snaps Eddie. Gotta take all we can. He may be a germ, with the art of a worm, but blast him, ain't he a man? So he sloshes out, fixing a dressing. He'd always a medical knack. When that wounded un, he rolls to his gun, and he plugs me pal in the back. Now what would you do, I asked you. There was me slaughtered mate. There was that un, I'd collared his gun. A snarl in his him of eight. What did I do? Here, whisper. He'd a shiny bald top to his head. But when I got through, between me and you, it was horrid and jaggy and red. Hang on like a limpet, Eddie. Thank God you ain't dead after all. It's slow and it's sure and it's steady. Which is hard, for he's big and I'm small. The rockets are shooting and shining, it's raining a perishing flood. The bullets are buzzing and whining, 
and I'm up to Miss Stern in the mud. There's all kinds of owling and hooting. It's black as a bucket of tar. Oh, I'm doing my bit, but I'm having a fit, and I wish I was home with Ma. Stick on like a plaster, Eddie. Old sport, you're a slack in your grip. Gawd, but I'm crocky already. Me feet, how they slither and slip. There goes the biff of a bullet. The Boshes have got us for fair. Another one, whoot! The son of a slut. He managed to miss by a air. Ow! What was it jabbed at me shoulder? Gave it a deuce of a wrench. Is it Eddie or me? What's a bleeding so free? Crust, but it's long to the trench. I ain't just as strong as a sando. And Ed ain't a flapper by far. I'm blamed if I understand how. We've managed to get where we are. But here's for a bit of a breather. Steady there, Ed, half a mo. Old pal, it's all right. It's a hell of a fight. But are we downhearted? No. Now war is a funny thing, ain't it? It's the rummiest sort of a go. For when it's most real, it's then that you feel you're a watching a cinema show. Here's me, what's a barber's assistant? Hey presto, it's somewhere in France. And I'm here in a pit where a coal box has it. And it's all like a giddy romance. The ruddy quick fires are spitting. The heavies are bellowing eight. And here I'm casually sitting and holding the head of me mate. Them ghastly green star shells is beaming. Art shrapnel is popping like rain. And I'm saying, Bert Higgins, you're dreaming. And you'll wake up in Amstead again. You'll wake up and hear yourself saying, Would you like, sir, to have a shampoo? Instead of shedding your blood in the rain and the mud, which is somehow the right thing to do. Which is somehow your oary eyed duty. What you're doing the best what you can for Amstead and home and beauty. And you've been and you've slaughtered a man. A fellow what punctured your partner. Oh, you hammered him hard on the head. And you still see his eyes staring bang at the skies. And you ain't even sorry he's dead. But you wish he was back in your diggings, asleep on your mouldy old straw. Oh, you're doing your bit, Herbert Higgins. But you ain't just enjoying the war. Hang on like a octopus, Eddie. It's us for the bomb belt again. Except for the shrap, which is it me a tap. I'm feeling as right as the rain. It's my silly old feet what are slipping. It's as dark as a hog's head of sin. But don't be uneasy, my pippin. I'm going to pilot you in. It's my silly old head what is reeling. The bullets is buzzing like bees. My shoulder's red hot and I'm bleeding a lot. And my legs is uninged at the knees. But we're staggering nearer and nearer. Just stick it, old sport. Play the game. If I make them out clearer and clearer. Our trenches are snapping with flame. Oh, we're stumbling closer and closer. Hang on there, lad, just one more try. Did you say, put you down? Damn it, no, sir. I'll carry you in if I die. By cracky, old fellow, they've seen us. They're sending out stretchers for two. Let's give them the hurrah between us. Hang lucky, we aren't booked through. My flipper is mashed to a jelly. A bullet has tickled your spleen. We've shed lots of gore and we're leaking some more. But what a occasion it's been. Oh, here comes the rescuing party. They're crawling out cautious and slow. Come back up and greet em, me arty, shoulder to shoulder so. They mustn't think we was downhearted. Old pal, we was never downhearted. If they asked us if we was downhearted, we'll owl in their faces, no. Oh. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song of Winter Weather by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. It isn't the foe that we fear, it isn't the bullets that whine, it isn't the business career of a shell or the bust of a mine, it isn't the snipers who seek to nip our young hopes in the bud, no, it isn't the guns, and it isn't the Huns, it's the mud, mud, mud. It isn't the melee we mind, that often is rather good fun, it isn't the shrapnel we find obtrusive when rained by the ton. It isn't the bounce of the bombs that give us a positive pain. It's the strafing we get when the weather is wet. It's the rain, rain, rain. It isn't because we lack grit we shrink from the horrors of war. We don't mind the battle a bit. In fact, that is what we are for. It isn't the rum jars and things make us wish we were back in the fold. It's the fingers that freeze and the boreal breeze. It's the cold, cold, cold. Oh, the rain, the mud, and the cold. The cold, the mud, and the rain. With weather at zero, it's hard for a hero from language that's rude to refrain. 
with porridging muck to the knees with sky that's a pouring a flood sure the worst of our foes are the pains and the woes of the rain the cold and the mud and a poem this recording is in the public domain tipperary days by robert w service read for librivox .org by nigel fisher oh weren't they the fine boys you never saw the beat of them singing all together with their throats bronze bare fighting fit and mirth mad music in the feet of them swinging on to glory and the wrath out there laughing by and chaffing by frolic in the smiles of them on the road the white road all the afternoon strangers in a strange land miles and miles and miles of them battle bound and heart high and singing this tune it's a long way to tipperary it's a long way to go it's a long way to tipperary and the sweetest girl i know good-bye piccadilly farewell leicester square it's a long long way to tipperary but my heart's right there come yvonne and juliet come mimi and cheer for them throw them flowers and kisses as they pass you by aren't they the lovely lads haven't you a tear for them going out so gallantly to dare and die what is it they're singing so some high hymn of motherland some immortal chanson of their faith and king marseillaise or brabancon anthem of that other land dears let us remember it that song they sing saint chemin long to tipperary saint chemin long c'est vrai saint chemin long to tipperary et la belle fille qui je connais bonjour piccadilly au revoir leicester square saint chemin long to tipperary mais mon coeur is there the gallant old contemptibles there isn't much remains of them so full of fun and fitness and a singing in their pride for some are cold as clabber and the corby picks the brains of them and some are back in blighty and are wishing they had died and yet it seems but yesterday that great glad sight of them swinging on to battle as the sky grew black and black but oh their glee and glory and the great grim fight of them just whistle tipperary and it all comes back it's a long way to tipperary which means home anywhere it's a long way to tipperary and the things what make you care good-bye piccadilly how i hopes my folks is well it's a long long way to tipperary ah ain't war just hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain fleurette by robert w service read for librivox dot org by peter yearsley the wounded canadian speaks my leg it's off at the knee do i miss it well some you see i've had it since i was born and lately a devilish corn i rather chuckle with glee to think how i've fooled that corn but i'll hobble around all right it isn't that it's my face oh i know i'm a hideous sight hardly a thing in place sort of gargoyle you'd say nurse won't give me a glass but i see the folks as they pass shudder and turn away turn away in distress mirror enough i guess i'm gay you bet i am gay but i wasn't a while ago if you'd seen me even to-day the darndest picture of woe with this caliban mug of mine so ravaged and raw and red turned to the wall in fine wishing that i was dead what has happened since then since i lay with my face to the wall the most despairing of men listen i'll tell you all that poilu across the way with the shrapnel wound in his head has a sister she came to-day to sit a while by his bed all morning i heard him fret oh when will she come fleurette then sudden a joyous cry the tripping of little feet the softest tenderest sigh a voice so fresh and sweet clear as a silver bell fresh as the morning dews c'est toi c'est toi ma celle mon frère comme je suis heureuse so over the blanket's rim i raised my terrible face and i saw how i envied him a girl of such delicate grace 
sixteen, all laughter and love, as gay as a linnet, and yet as tenderly sweet as a dove, half woman, half child, fleurette. Then I turned to the wall again. I was awfully blue, you see, and I thought, with a bitter pain, such visions are not for me. So there, like a log, I lay, all hidden, I thought, from view, when sudden I heard her say, Ah, who is that Merleur? Then briefly I heard him tell, however he came to know, how I'd smothered a bomb that fell into the trench, and so none of my men were hit, though it busted me up a bit. Well, I didn't quiver an eye, and he chattered, and there she sat, and I fancied I heard her sigh, but I wouldn't just swear to that. And maybe she wasn't so bright, though she talked in a merry strain, and I closed my eyes ever so tight, yet I saw her ever so plain, her dear little tilted nose, her delicate dimpled chin, her mouth like a budding rose, and the glistening pearls within, her eyes like the violet, such a rare little queen, Fleurette. And at last when she rose to go, the light was a little dim, and I ventured to peep, and so I saw her, graceful and slim, and she kissed him, and kissed him, and oh, how I envied and envied him. So when she was gone, I said in rather a dreary voice to him of the opposite bed, Ah, oh, friend, how you must rejoice, but me, I'm a thing of dread, for me, never more the bliss the thrill of a woman's kiss. Then I stopped, for lo, she was there, and a great light shone in her eyes, and me, I could only stare, I was taken so by surprise, when gently she bent her head. May I kiss you, sergeant, she said. Then she kissed my burning lips, with her mouth like a scented flower, and I thrilled to the fingertips, and I hadn't even the power to say, God bless you, dear. And I felt such a precious tear fall on my withered cheek, and darn it, I couldn't speak. And so she went sadly away, and I knew that my eyes were wet. Ah, not to my dying day will I forget, forget. Can you wonder now I'm gay? God bless her. That little fleurette. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Funk by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Nigel Fisher. When your marrow bone seems holler, and you're glad you ain't no taller, and you're all a shaking like you had the chills. When your skin creeps like a pullet's and you're ducking all the bullets and you're green as gorgonzola round the gills. When your legs seem made of jelly and you're squeamish in the belly and you want to turn around and do a bunk. For God's sake, kid, don't show it. Don't let your mateys know it. You're just suffering from funk, funk, funk. Of course, there's no denying that it ain't so easy trying to grin and grip your rifle by the butt. When the old world rips asunder, and you sees your pal go under, as a bunch of shrapnel sprays him on the nut. I admit it's hard contriving, when you ears the shells arriving, to discover you're a blooming bit of spunk. But my lad, you've got to do it, and your God will see you through it. For what he hates is funk, funk, funk. So stand up, son, look gritty. Just I'm a lively ditty, and only be afraid to be afraid. Just hold your rifle steady, and have your been it ready. For that's the way good soldier men is made. And if you has to die, as sometimes happens, why? Far better die a hero than a skunk. A doing of your bit, and so to hell with it. There ain't no bloomin' funk, funk, funk. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our Hero by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Tabler Flowers, only flowers, bring me dainty posies, blossoms for forgetfulness. That was all he said. 
so we sacked our gardens violets and roses lilies white and bluebells laid we on his bed soft his pale hands touched them tenderly caressing soft into his tired eyes came a little light such a wistful love look gentle as a blessing there amid the flowers waited he the night i would have you raise me i can see the west then i would see the sun set once before i go so he lay a-gazing seemed to be at rest then quiet as a spirit in the golden glow so he lay a-watching rosy castles crumbling motes of blinding amber bastions of flame rugged rifts of opal crimson turrets tumbling so he lay a-dreaming till the shadows came open wide the window there's a lark singing there's a glad lark singing in the evening sky how it's wild with rapture radiantly winging oh it's good to hear that when one has to die i am horror haunted from the hell they found me i am battle broken all i want is rest ah it's good to die so blossoms all around me and a kind lark singing in the golden west flowers song and sunshine just one thing is wanting just the happy laughter of a little child so we brought our dearest doris all enchanting tenderly he kissed her radiant he smiled in the golden peace time you will tell the story how for you and yours sweet bitter deaths were ours god bless the little children so he passed to glory so we left him sleeping still amid the flowers end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Mate by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley I've been sitting staring, staring at his muddy pair of boots, and trying to convince myself it's him. Look out there, lad, that sniper is a dicey when he shoots. He'll be laying a view out the same as Jim. Jim as lies there in the dugout with his blanket round his head to keep his brains from mixing with the mud, and his face as white as putty and his overcoat all red like he's spilt a blooming paint-pot but it's blood and i'm trying to remember of a time we wasn't pals how often we've played hooky him and me and sometimes it was music halls and sometimes it was gals and even there we had no disagree for when he copped maria jones the one i liked the best i shook his hand and loaned him half a quid i saw him through the parson's job i helped him make his nest i even stood godfather to the kid so when the war broke out says he well what about it joe well what about it lad says i to him his missus made an awful fuss but he was mad to go he always was high spirited was jim well none of it's been heaven and the most of it's been hell but we've shared our baccy and we've halved our bread We'd all the luck at wipers, and we shaved through Neuve Chapelle, and that sniping bastard gets him on the head. Now, what I wants to know is, why wasn't it me he was took? I've only got myself. He stands for three. I'm plainer than a louse, while he was handsome as a duke. He always was a better man than me. He was going home next Tuesday. He was happy as a lark and he'd just received a letter from his kid, and he struck a match to show me, as we stood there in the dark, when that bleeding bullet got him on the lid. He was killed so awful sudden that he hadn't time to die. He sort of jumped and came down with a thud. Them corpsey-looking star-shells kept a-streaming in the sky, and there he lay like nothing in the mud. And there he lay so quiet, with no mansard to his head, and I'm sick and blamed if i can understand the pots of half and half we'd had and zip like that he's dead with the letter of his nipper in his hand end of poem this recording is in the public domain milking time by robert w service read for LibriVox.org by nemo there's a drip of honeysuckle in the deep green lane there's old martin jogging homeward on his worn old wain there are cheery petals falling and a cuckoo calling calling 
and a score of larks god bless em but it's all pain pain for you see i'm not really there at all not at all for you see i'm in the trenches where the crump crumps fall and the bits of shells are screaming and it's only blessed dreaming that in fancy i am seeming back in old saint paul oh i've thought of it so often since i've come down here and i never dreamt that any place could be so dear the silvered windstone houses and the rosy men in blouses and the kindly white-capped women where their eyes spring clear and mothers sitting knitting where her roses climb and the angelus is calling with a soft soft chime and the sea wind comes caressing and the lights a golden blessing and yvonne yvonne is guessing that it's milking time oh it's sunday for she's wearing of her broidered gown and she draws the pasture pickets and the cows come down and their feet are powdered yellow and their voices honey mellow and they bring a scent of clover and their eyes are brown and yvonne is dreaming after but her eyes are blue and her lips are made for laughter and her white teeth too and her mouth is like a cheery and a dimple mocking merry is lurking in the very cheek she turns to you so i walk beside her kindly and she laughs at me and i heap her arms with lilac from the lilac tree and a golden light is welling and a golden peace is dwelling when a thousand birds are telling how it's good to be and what are pouting lips for if they can't be kissed and i filled her arms with blossom so she can't resist and the cows are sadly straying and her mother must be saying that yvonne is long delaying god how close that mist a nice polite reminder that the bosh are nigh that we're here to fight like devils and if need be die that from kissing pretty wenches to the frantic firing benches of the battered tattered trenches is a far far cry yet still i'm sitting dreaming in the glare and grime and once again i'm hearing of them church bells chime and how i wonder whether in the golden summer weather we will fetch the cows together when it's milking time english voice months later ow bill a rotten frenchy Ew. He ain't arf prime. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Young Fellow, My Lad by Robert W. Service, read for LibriVox.org by Maria de Fatima da Silva. Where are you going, young fellow, my lad? on this glittering morn of may i'm going to join the colors dad they're looking for men they say but you're only a boy young fellow my lad you aren't obliged to go i'm seventeen and a quarter dad and ever so strong you know so you're off to france young fellow my lad and you're looking so fit and bright i'm terribly sorry to leave you dad but I feel that I'm doing right. God bless you and keep you, young fellow, my lad. You're all of my life, you know. Don't worry, I'll soon be back, dear dad, and I'm awfully proud to go. Why don't you write, young fellow, my lad? I watch for the post each day, and I miss you so, and I'm awfully sad, and it's months since you went away and I've had the fire in the parlor lit, and I'm keeping it burning bright, till my boy comes home, and here I sit, into the quiet night. What is the matter, young fellow, my lad? No letter again today. Why did the postman look so sad, and sigh as he turned away? I hear them tell that we've gained new ground, but a terrible price we've paid. God grant, my boy, that you're safe and sound, but, oh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. They've told me the truth, young fellow, my lad. You'll never come back again. 
O oh God, the dreams and the dreams I've had, and the hopes I've nursed in vain. For you passed in the night, young fellow, my lad, and you proved in the cruel test of the screaming shell and the battle hell that my boy was one of the best. So you live, you live, young fellow, my lad, in the gleam of the evening star, in the wood note wild and the laugh of the child, in all sweet things that are. And you'll never die, my wonderful boy, while life is noble and true. For all our beauty and hope and joy, we will owe to our lads like you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song of the Sandbags by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Skip Chorus No, Bill, I'm not a spoonin' out no patriotic tosh. The cove behind the sandbags ain't a death or glory cuss. And though I strafe some good and hard, I doesn't hate the bosh. I guess they're mostly decent, just the same as most of us. I guess they loves their homes and kids as much as you or me. Just the same as you or me, they'd rather shake than fight. And if we happened to be born at Berlin on the spree, we'd be out there with Hans and Fritz, dead sure that we was right. A standin' up to the sandbags, it's funny the thoughts what come. Starin' into the darkness, hearin' the bullets hum. Zing, zip, ping, rip! Ark are the bullets um a leanin' against the sandbags with me rifle under me ear. Oh, I've had more thoughts on a century go than I used to have in a year. I wonder, Bill, if Hans and Fritz is wonderin' like me what's at the bottom of it all, what all the slaughter's for. He thinks he's right, of course he ain't, but this we both agree. If them as made it had to fight, there wouldn't be no war. If them as lies in feather beds while we kips in the mud, if them as makes their fortunes while we fight for em like hell, if them as slings their pot of ink just had to sling their blood, by crust I'm thinking there'd be another tale to tell. Shiverin' up to the sandbags with a icicle stead of a spine. Don't it seem funny the things you think here in the firing line? We what zit zut lord how the bullets whine Unkerin down when a star shell cracks in a sputter o' light. You can jaw to your soul by the sandbags most any old time o' night. They talks o' England's glory and a holdin' of our trade, of empire and I destiny until we're fair flim flammed. But if it's for the likes o' that that bloody war is made, then what I say is empire and I destiny be damned. There's only one good cause, Bill, for poor blokes like us to fight. That's self-defence for hearth and home and them that bears our name. And that's what I'm a-doing by the sandbags here tonight. But Fritz out there will tell you he's a-doing of the same. Staring over the sandbags, sick of the old damned thing, firing to keep myself awake, hearing the bullets sing. Hiss, twang, zing, pang, saucy the bullets sing. Dreaming here by the sandbags of a day when war will cease, when Hans and Fritz and Bill and me will clink our mugs in fraternity, and a brotherhood of labor will be the brotherhood of peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the wire by Robert W. Surface, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. O oh God, take the sun from the sky. It's burning me, scorching me up. 
God, can't you hear my cry? Water, a poor little cup. It's laughing, the cursed sun. See how it swells and swells, fierce as a hundred hells. God, will it never have done? It's searing the flesh on my bones. It's beating with hammers red my eyeballs into my head. It's parching my very moans. See, it's the size of the sky, and the sky is a torrent of fire foaming on me as I lie here on the wire. The wire of the thousands that wheeze and hum heedlessly over my head. Why can't a bullet come pierce to my brain instead? Blacken forever my brain, finish forever my pain. Here, in the hellish glare, why must I suffer so? Is it God doesn't care? Is it God doesn't know? Oh, to be killed outright, clean in the clash of the fight. That is a golden death, that is a boon. But this, drawing an anguished breath under a hot abyss, under a stooping sky of seething sulphurous fire, scorching me up as I lie here on the wire, the wire. Hasten, O God, thy night. Hide from my eyes the sight of the body I stare and see shattered so hideously. I can't believe that it's mine. My body was white and sweet. Flawless and fair and fine, shapely from head to feet. Oh, no, I can never be the thing of horror I see under the rifle fire. Trust on the wire, the wire. Of night and of death I dream. Night that will bring me peace. Coolness and starry gleam, stillness and death's release. Ages and ages have passed. Lo, it is night at last. Night. But the guns roar out, night, but the hosts attack. Red and yellow and black geysers of doom upspout. Silver and green and red star shells hover and spread. Yonder, off to the right, fiercely kindles the fight. Roaring near and more near, thundering now in my ear. Close to me, close. Oh, hark, someone moans in the dark. I hear, but I cannot see. I hear as the rest retire. Someone is caught like me, caught on the wire, the wire. Again, the shuddering dawn, weird and wicked and wan. Again, and I'm not yet gone. The man whom I heard is dead. Now I can understand. A bullet hole in his head, a pistol gripped in his hand. Well, he knew what to do. Yes, and now I know too. Hark the resentful guns. Oh, how thankful am I to think my beloved ones will never know how I die. I've suffered more than my share. I'm shattered beyond repair. I fought like a man the fight, and now I demand the right. God, how his fingers cling. To do without shame this thing. Good. There's a bullet still. Now I'm ready to fire. Blame me, God, if you will. Here on the wire, the wire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bill's Grave by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. I'm gathering flowers by the wayside to lay on the grave of Bill. I've sneaked away from the billet, cause Jim wouldn't understand. He'd call me a silly fathead, and laugh till it made him ill to see me here in the cornfield, with a big bouquet in me hand. For Jim and me we are ruffins, but Bill was one of the best. We listed, and learned together to laugh at the worst what comes. Then Bill copped a packet proper, and took his departure west. So sudden he hadn't a minute to say good-bye to his chums. And they took me to where he was planted, a sort of a measly mound, and, thinks I, our Bill would be tickled, being so soft and queer, if I gathered a bunch of them wild flowers and sort of arranged them round, like a kind of a bloody headpiece, and that's the reason I'm here. But not for the love of glory I wouldn't have Jim to know, 
he'd call me a slobberin' sissy and laugh till his sides was sore i'd have laughed at meself too it isn't so long ago but somehow it changes a feller having a taste of war it helps a man to be helpful to know what his pals is worth them golden poppies is blazing like lamps some fairy has lit i'm fond of them big white dices now jim's of the salt of the earth but he has got a tongue what's a terror and he ain't sentimental a bit i likes them blue chaps what's idling so shy like among the corn won't bill be glad we was all as thicker and thieves us three why who's that singing so early jim and as sure as i'm born he's there in the giddy cornfields a gathering flowers like me quick drop me posy behind me i watches him for a while then i says what o there chummy what price the little bouquet and he starts like a bloke what's guilty and he says with a sheepish smile she's a bit of all right the widow what keeps the estaminet so he goes away in a hurry and i wishes him best o luck and i picks up me bunch o' wild flowers and the light's getting sort o dim when i makes me way to the boneyard and i stares like a man what's stuck for what do i see bill's grave mound strewn with the flowers of jim of course i won't never tell him being a tactical lad and jim parley vous to the widow tres beans l'amour compris oh he'd die of shame if he knew i knew but say won't bill be glad when he stares through the bleeding clods and sees the blossoms of jim and me End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jean de Pre by Robert W. Service, read for LibriVox.org by Maria de Fatima da Silva. O oh, we whose hearts are resonant and ring towards romance, hear ye the story of a boy, a peasant boy of France. A lad uncouth and warped with toil, yet who, when child came, could feel within his soul a leap and saw the sacred flame, could stand upright and scorn and smite, as only heroes may. Oh, hearken, let me try to tell the tale of Jean de Pre. With fire and sword, the Teuton horde was ravaging the land, and there was darkness and despair grim death on every hand red fields of slaughter sloping down to reuben's black abyss the wolves of war ran evil fanged and little did they miss and on they came with fear and flame to burn and loot and slay until they reached the red roofed croft the home of jean de pre rout out the village one and all the Ulan captain said, Behold, some hand has fired a shot, my trumpeter is dead. Now shall they Prussian vengeance know, now shall they rue the day. For by this sacred German slain, ten of these dogs shall pay. They drove the cowering peasants forth, women and babes and men. And from the last, with many a jeer, the captain chose he ten. Ten simple peasants bowed with toil. They stood, they knew not why, against the grey wall of the church, hearing their children cry. Hearing their wives and mothers wail, with faces dazed they stood. A moment only. Ready, fire! They weltered in their blood. But there was one who gazed unseen, who heard the frenzied cries, who saw these men in sabots fall, before their children's eyes a zouave wounded in a ditch and knowing death was nigh he laughed with joy ah here is where i settle ere i die he clutched his rifle once again and long he aimed and well a shot beside his victim's ten the ulan captain fell they dragged the wounded zouave out their rage was like a flame with bayonets they pinned him down until their measure came a blond full-blooded man he was an arrogant of eye he stared to see with shattered skull his favorite captain lie nay do not finish him so quick 
this foreign swine he cried go nail him to the big church door he shall be crucified with bayonets through hands and feet they nailed the zouave there and there was anguish in his eyes and horror in his stare water a single drop he moaned but how they jeered at him and mocked him with an empty cup and saw his sight grow dim and as in agony of death with blood his lips were wet the prussian major gaily laughed and lit a cigarette but mid the white-faced villagers who cowered in horror by was one who saw the woeful sight who heard the woeful cry water one little drop i beg for love of christ who died it was the little jean de Prey, who turned and stole aside it was the little barefoot boy who came with cup brim and walked up to the dying man and gave the drink to him a roar of rage they seize the boy they tear him fast away the prussian major swings around no longer is he gay his teeth are wolfishly agleam his face all dark with spite go shoot the brat he snarls the dead defy our prussian might yet stay i have another thought i'll kindly be and spare quick give the lad a rifle charge and set him squarely there and bid him shoot and shoot to kill haste make him understand the dying dog he fain would save shall perish by his hand and all his kindred they shall see and all shall curse his name who bought his life at such a cost the price of death and shame they brought the boy while died with fear they made him understand they stood him by the dying man a rifle in his hand make haste said they the time is short and you must kill or die the major puffed his cigarette amusement in his eye and then the dying zouave heard and raised his weary head shoot son twill be the best for both shoot swift and straight he said fire first and last and do not flinch for lost to hope am i and i will murmur vive la france and bless you ere i die half blind with blows the boy stood there he seemed to swoon and sway then in that moment woke the soul of little jean de Prey. he saw the woods go sheening down the larks were singing clear and oh the scents and sounds of spring how sweet they were how dear he felt the scent of new-mown hay a soft breeze fanned his brow o oh god the paths of peace and toil how precious were they now the summer days and summer ways how bright with hope and bliss the autumn such a dream of gold and all must end in this this shining rifle in his hand that shambles all around the zouave there with dying glare the blood upon the ground the brutal faces round him ringed the evil eyes aflame that prussian bully standing by as if he watched a game make haste and shoot the major sneered a minute more i give a minute more to kill your friend if you yourself would live they only saw a barefoot boy with blanched and twitching face they did not see within his eyes the glory of his race the glory of a million men who for fair france have died the splendor of self-sacrifice that will not be denied yet he was but a peasant lad and oh but life was sweet your minutes nearly gone my lad he heard a voice repeat shoot shoot the dying zouave moaned shoot shoot the soldier said then jean de Prey reached out and shot the prussian major dead End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Going Home by Robert W. Service. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. I'm going home to Blighty, 
ain't i glad to have the chance i'm loaded up with fighting and i've had my fill of france i'm feeling so excited like i want to sing and dance for i'm going home to blighty in the morning i'm going home to blighty can you wonder as i'm gay i've got a wound i wouldn't sell for half a year of pay a harm that's mashed the jelly in the nicest sort of way for it takes me home to blighty in the morning how everlasting keen i was on getting to the front i'd ginger for a dozen and i helped to bear the brunt but cheese and crust i'm crazy now i've done me little stunt to sniff the air of blighty in the morning i've looked upon the wine that's white and on the wine that's red i've looked on cider flowing till it fairly turned me head but oh the finest scoff will be when all is done and said a pint of bass in blighty in the morning i'm going back to blighty which i left to strafe the un i fought in bloody battles and i've had a heap of fun but now me flipper's busted and i think me duty's done and i'll kiss me girl in blighty in the morning oh there be foreign lands to see and some of em be fine and there be foreign girls to kiss and scented foreign wine but there's no land like england and no other girl like mine thank god for dear old blighty in the morning end of poem this recording is in the public domain Cocotte by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Aaron Grassy. Cocotte. When a girl's sixteen, and as poor as she's pretty, and she hasn't a friend and she hasn't a home, hi ho, she's as safe in Paris City as a lamb night strayed where the wild wolves roam. And that was I. Oh, it's seven years now. Some water's run down the Seine since then. And I've almost forgotten the pangs and the tears now. And I've almost taken the measure of men. Oh, I found me a lover who loved me only, artist and poet, and almost a boy. And my heart was bruised, and my life was lonely. And him I adored with a wonderful joy. If he'd come to me with his pockets empty, how we'd have laughed in a garret gay. But he was rich, and in radiant plenty we lived in a villa at Viroflay. Then came the war, and a bliss bereft me. Then came the call, and he went away. All that he had in the world... He left me with the rosed wreaths villa at Viroflay. Then came the news and the tragic story. My hero, my splendid lover, was dead, sword in hand on the field of glory, and he died with my name on his lips, they said. So here am I in my widow's mourning, the weeds I've really no right to wear. And women fix me with eyes of scorning, call me cocotte, but I do not care. And men look at me with eyes that borrow the brightness of love, but I turn away. Alone, say I, I will live with sorrow in my little villa at Viroflay. And lo, I'm living alone with pity. And they say that pity from love's not far. Let me tell you all, last week in the city, I took the metro at Saint-Lazare, and the carriage was crowded to overflowing, and when there entered at chateau Don two wounded poilus with medals showing, I eagerly gave my seat to one. You should have seen them. They'd slipped death's clutches, but sadder a sight you will rarely find. One had a leg off and walked on crutches. The other, a bit of a boy, was blind. And they both sat down, and the lad was trying to grope his way as a blind man tries. And half of the women around were crying, and some of the men had tears in their eyes. 
How he stirred me, this blind boy, clinging just like a child to his crippled chum. But I did not cry. Oh, no, a singing came to my heart for a year so dumb. Then I knew that at three and twenty there is wonderful work to be done. Comfort and kindness and joy in plenty, peace and light and love to be won. Oh, thought I, could mine eyes be given to one who will live in the dark alway? To love and to serve, t'would make life heaven here in my villa at Viroflay. So I left my poilus. And now you wonder why today I am so elate? Look, in the glory of sunshine yonder, they're bringing my blind boy in at the gate. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. My Bainit by Robert W. Service, read for LibriVox.org by Maria Fatima da Silva. When first I left Blighty, they gave me a bainit and told me it had to be smothered with gore. But blimey, I haven't been able to stain it, so far as I've gone with the vintage of war. For ain't it a fraud when a Bosch and yours truly gets into a mix in the grit and the grime? He jerks up his hands with a yell and is duly part of me outfit every time. Left, right, hands and frits. Goose step, keep up your mitts. Oh my, ain't it a shine, part of me outfit every time. At toasting a biscuit, me bane it's a dandy. I've used it to open a bully beef can. For poking the fire, it comes in very handy. For any old thing but for sticking a man. How often I've said, here, I'm going to press you into a urn till you're seasoned for prime. And fiercely I rushes to do it, but bless you, part of me outfit every time. Lord, yes, don't they look glad, right, oh, I'll camarade, oh my, always the same, part of me outfit every time. I'm hunting for someone to christen me bayonet, some nice juicy chutin what's fighting in France. I'm fairly downhearted. How can you explain it? I keeps getting prisoners every chance. As soon as they sees me, they ups and surrenders, extended like monkeys what's trying to climb. And I uses me bayonet to slit their suspenders, part of me outfit every time. Foreigns! Lord, what a bag! Here, Fritz, sample a fag! Oh my, ain't it a game? Part of me outfit every time. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carry On by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. It's easy to fight when everything's right and you're mad with the thrill and the glory. It's easy to cheer when victory's near and wallow in fields that are gory. It's a different song when everything's wrong, when you're feeling infernally mortal, when it's ten against one and hope there's none. Buck up, little soldier, and chortle. Carry on, carry on. There isn't much punch in your blow. You're glaring and staring and hitting out blind. You're muddy and bloody, but never you mind. Carry on, carry on. You haven't the ghost of a show. It's looking like death. But while you've a breath, carry on, my son, carry on. And so in the strife of the battle of life, it's easy to fight when you're winning. It's easy to slave and starve and be brave when the dawn of success is beginning. But the man who can meet despair and defeat with a cheer, there's the man of God's choosing. The man who can fight to heaven's own height is the man who can fight when he's losing. 
carry on carry on things never were looming so black but show that you haven't a cowardly streak and though you're unlucky you never are weak carry on carry on brace up for another attack it's looking like hell but you never can tell carry on old man carry on there are some who drift out in the deserts of doubt and some who in brutishness wallow there are others i know who in piety go because of a heaven to follow but to labor with zest and to give of your best for the sweetness and joy of the giving to help folks along with a hand and a song why there's the real sunshine of living carry on carry on fight the good fight and true believe in your mission greet life with a cheer there's big work to do and that's why you are here carry on carry on let the world be the better for you and at last when you die let this be your cry carry on my soul carry on in the poem this recording is in the public domain Over the Parapet by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Skip Chorus All day long when the shells sail over I stand at the sandbags and take my chance But at night, at night I'm a reckless rover And over the parapet gleams romance Romance, romance, how I've dreamed it, writing dreary old records of money and mart, me with my head chuck full of fighting, and the blood of Vikings to thrill my heart. But little I thought that my time was coming, sudden and splendid, supreme and soon, and here I am with the bullets humming as I crawl and I curse the light of the moon out alone for adventure thirsting out in mysterious no man's land prone with the dead when a star shell bursting flares on the horrors on every hand there are ruby stars and they drip and wiggle and the grasses gleam in a light blood red there are emerald stars and their tails they wriggle and ghastly they glare on the face of the dead but the worst of all are the stars of whiteness that spill in a pool of pearly flame, pretty as gems in their silver brightness and etching a man for a bullet's aim. Yet, oh, it's great to be here with danger, here in the weird death-pregnant dark, in the devil's pasture a stealthy ranger when the moon is decently hiding. Hark, what was that? Was it just the shiver of an eerie wind or a clammy hand, the rustle of grass, or the passing quiver of one of the ghosts of no man's land? It's only at night when the ghosts awaken and gibber and whisper horrible things, for to every foot of this God-forsaken zone of jeopard some horror clings. Ah, uh, what was that? It felt like a jelly, the flattish mound and the noisome grass. You three big rats running free of its belly, out of my way and let me pass. But if there's horror, there's beauty, wonder, the trench lights gleam and the rockets play. That flood of magnificent orange yonder is a battery blazing miles away. With a rush and a singing a great shell passes, the rifles resentfully bicker and brawl, and here I crouch in the dew-drenched grasses and look and listen and love it all. God, what a life! But I must make haste now before the shadow of night be spent. It's little the time there is to waste now if I do the job for which I was sent. My bombs are right and my clippers ready, and I wriggle out to the chosen place when I hear a rustle. Steady, steady. Who am I staring slap in the face? There in the dark I can hear him breathing, a foot away, and as still as death. And my heart beats hard and my brain is seething, 
and I know he's a hun by the smell of his breath. Then will you surrender? I whisper hoarsely, for it's death, swift death, to utter a cry. English Weinhund, he murmurs coarsely, then we'll fight it out in the dark, say I. So we grip and we slip and we trip and wrestle there in the gutter of no man's land, and I feel my nails in his windpipe nestle, and he tries to gouge, but I bite his hand, and he tries to squeal, but I squeeze him tighter. Now I say I can kill you fine, but tell me first, you Teutonic blighter, have you any children? He answers, nine. Nine? Well, I cannot kill such a father, so I tie his hands and I leave him there. Do I finish my little job? Well, rather. And I get home safe with some light to spare. I ho by day it's just prosy duty, doing the same old song and dance, but oh, with the night joy, glory, beauty, over the parapet, life, romance. End of poem. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. The Ballad of Soulful Sam by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Skip Chorus. You want me to tell you a story, a yarn of the fire and line, of our thin red khaki heroes out there where the bullets whine, out there where the bombs are bustin' and a cannon like Eldor's slam. Just order another drink, boys, and I'll tell you a soulful Sam. Oh, Sam, he was never hilarious, though I'd had some mates that was wuss. He hadn't CB on his program, he was never known to cuss. For a card or a skirt or a beer mug, he hadn't a friendly word. But when it came down to scripture, say, wasn't he just a bird? He always had tracks in his pocket, the which he would haste to present, and though the fellers had used them in ways that they never was meant, I used to read em religious, and frequent I've been impressed by some of the bundles of holy dope he carried around in his vest. For I, and oh, how I shudder at the horror the word conveys, I've been, let me whisper it coarsely, a gambler half of me days. A gambler, you hear, a gambler! It makes me wishful to weep, and yet how it's true, my brethren, I'd rather gamble than sleep. I've gambled the old world over, from Monte Carlo to Maine, from Dawson City to Dover, from San Francisco to Spain. Cards, they have been me ruin, they've taken me pride in me pelf, and when I'd no one to play with, why, I'd go and play by myself. And Sam, he would sit and watch me as I suffered a greasy deck, and he'd say, you're bound to perdition, and I'd answer, get off me neck. And that's how we came to get friendly, though built on a different plane. Me what's a desperate gambler, him such a good young man. But on to me tale, just imagine. Darkness, the battle front, the furious uns attackin', us ones a bearin' the brunt. Me crouchin' behind a sandbag, tryin' hard to keep calm. When I hear someone singin' a hymn tune, behold it is soulful Sam. Yes, right in the crash of the combat and the fury of flash and flame, he was shootin' and singin' serenely, as if he enjoyed the same. And there in the heat of the battle, as the hordes of demons attacked, he dipped down into his tunic, and he handed me out a tract. Then a star shell flared, and I read it, Oh, flee from the wrath to come. Nice cheerful subject, I tell you, when you're earin' the bullet some. And afore I had time to thank him, just one of them bits of lead comes slingin' along in a hurry, and it hits me partner. Dead? No, sirree, not by a long sight, for it plugged him hard in the chest, just where he'd tracks for an army corps stowed away in his vest. On its mission of death that bullet hustled along, and it caved a hole in them tracks to his eye, boys, but the life of me pal was saved. 
and there as he showed me in triumph and horror was choking my breath on come another bullet on its horrible mission of death on through the night it cavorted seeking its haven of rest and it zipped through a crack in the sandbag and it walloped me bang in the breast was i killed you ask oh no boys why am i sitting here gazing with mournful vision at a mug long empty a beer with a throat as dry as a oh thank ye i don't mind much if i do beer with a dash of olives that's my particular brew yes that was a terrible moment it hammered me hard o'er the art it bowled me down like a nine-pin and i looked for the gore to start and i saw in the flash of a moment in that thunder of hate and strife me wretched passed like a pitcher the sins of a gambler's life for i had no tracks to save me to thwart that mad missile's doom i had no pious pamphlets to help me cheat the tomb i had no holy leaflets to baffle a bullet's aim i'd only a deck of cards boys but it seemed to do just the same end of poem this recording is in the public domain Only a Bosch by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. We brought him in from between the lines. We'd better have let him lie. For what's the use of risking one's skin for a tyke that's going to die? What's the use of tearing him loose under a gruelling fire when he's shot in the head and worse than dead and all messed up on the wire? However, I say, we brought him in. Diable, the mud was bad. The trench was crooked and greasy and high, and oh, what a time we had! And often we slipped, and often we tripped, but never he made a moan, and how we were wet with blood and with sweat, but we carried him in like our own. Now there he lies in the dugout, dim, awaiting the ambulance, and the doctor shrugs his shoulders at him, and remarks, he hasn't a chance, and we squat and smoke at our game of bridge on the glistening straw-packed floor and above our oaths we can hear his breath deep drawn in a kind of snore for the dressing station is long and low and the candles gutter dim and the mean light falls on the cold clay walls and our faces bristly and grim and we flap our cards on the lousy straw and we laugh and jibe as we play and you'd never know that the cursed foe was less than a mile away as we con our cards in the rancid gloom, oppressed by that snoring breath, you'd never dream that our broad roof-beam was swept by the broom of death. hey -o, my turn for the dummy hand. I rise and I stretch a bit. The fetid air is making me yawn, and my cigarette's unlit. So I go to the nearest candle flame, and the man we brought is there, and his face is white in the shabby light, and I stand at his feet and stare stand for a while and quietly stare for strange though it seems to be the dying bosch on the stretcher there has a queer resemblance to me it gives one a kind of a turn you know to come on a thing like that it's just as if i were lying there with a turban of blood for a hat lying there in a coat grey-green instead of a coat grey-blue with one of my eyes all shot away and my brain half tumbling through lying there with a chest that heaves like a bellows up and down and a cheek as white as snow on a grave and lips that are coffee brown and confound him too he wears like me on his finger a wedding ring and around his neck as around my own by a greasy bit of string a locket hangs with a woman's face and i turn it about to see just as I thought, on the other side, the faces of children, three, clustered together, cherub-like, three little laughing girls, with the usual tiny rosebud mouths, and the usual silken curls. Zut, I say, he has beaten me, for me I have only two. And I push the locket beneath his shirt, feeling a little blue. Oh, it isn't cheerful to see a man the marvellous work of God, 
crushed in the mutilation mill, crushed to a smeary clod. Oh, it isn't cheerful to hear him moan, but it isn't that I mind. It isn't the anguish that goes with him, it's the anguish he leaves behind. For his going opens a tragic door that gives on a world of pain, and the death he dies, those who live and love, will die again and again. So here I am at my cards once more, but it's kind of spoiling my play, thinking of those three brats of his, so many a mile away. War is war, and he's only a Bosch, and we all of us take our chance. But all the same, I'll be mighty glad when I'm hearing the ambulance. One foe the less, but all the same, I'm heartily glad I'm not the man who gave him his broken head, the sniper who fired the shot. No trumps you make it, I think you said? You'll pardon me if I err. Uh, for a moment I thought of other things. Mon Dieu! Quel vache de guerre! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pilgrims by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. For oh, when the war will be over, we'll go and we'll look for our dead. We'll go when the bees on the clover and the plume of the poppy is red. We'll go when the year's at its gayest, when meadows are laughing with flowers, and there where the crosses are grayest, we'll seek for the cross that is ours. For they cry to us, Friends, we are lonely, a weary the night and the day. But come in the blossom time only, Come when our graves will be gay, when daffodils all are a blowing, and larks are a thrilling the skies. Oh, come with the hearts of you glowing, and the joy of the spring in your eyes. But never, oh, never come sighing, for ours was the splendid release, and oh, but twas joy in the dying. To know we were winning you peace. So come when the valleys are sheening, And fledged with the promise of grain, And here where our graves will be greening, Just smile and be happy again. And so when the war will be over, We'll seek for the wonderful one, And maiden will look for her lover, and mother will look for her son. And there will be end to our grieving, and gladness will gleam over loss. As glory beyond all believing, we point to a name on a cross. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Prisoner by Robert W. Service Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley We was in a crump hole, him and me. Fighting with our bayonets was we. Fighting hard as hell we was. Fighting fierce as fire, because it was him or me as must be downed. He was twice as big as me. I was half the weight of he. We was like a terrier and a hound. Struth, but he was sitch a handsome bloke. Me, I'm handsome as a chunk of coke. Did I give it him? Not half. Why, it fairly made me laugh, cos his blooming bellows wasn't sound. Couldn't fight for monkey nuts. Soon I gets him in the guts. There he lies a-flopping on the ground. In I goes to finish up the job. Quick, he throws his hands above his knob. Speak in English good as me. Tain't no use to kill, says he. Can't you take me prisoner instead? Why, I'd like to, sir, says I. But... You knows the reason why. If we pokes our noses out, we're dead. Sorry, sir. Then on the other end, as a gent like you must understand, if I hold you longer here, with your pals so very near, it's me who'll have a free trip to Berlin. 
if i lets you go away why you'll fight another day see the situation i am in anyway i'll tell you what i'll do being kind and seeing as it's you knowing how it's cold the feel of half a yard of steel i'll let you have a rifle ball instead now just think yourself in luck here old man you keep em stuck them saucy dukes o yours above your head how his mitts shot up it made me smile how he seemed to ponder for a while then he says it seems a shame me a man what's known to fame give me blocks of stone i'll give you gods whereas pardon me i'm sure you my friend are still obscure in war says i that makes no blurry odds then says he i've painted pictures too oh dear god the work i planned to do and to think this is the end here says i my heartiest friend don't you give yourself no friskin airs pictures statues is that why you should be let off to die that the best you done just say your prayers once again he seems to think a while then he smiles a very haughty smile why no sir it's not the best there's a locket next me breast picture of a girl whose eyes are blue that's the best i've done says he that's me daughter aged three blimey says i i've a nipper too straight i chucks my rifle to one side shows him with a loving father's pride me own little mary jane proud he shows me is elaine and we talks as friendly as can be then i helps him on his way hopes he's safe at home to-day wonders how would he have treated me end of poem this recording is in the public domain tricolor by robert w service read for LibriVox.org by maria fatima da silva poppies you try to tell me glowing there in the wheat poppies ah no you mock me it's blurred i tell you it's blurred it's gleaming wet in the grasses it's glistening warm in the wheat it doubles the ferns and the clover it brings in an angry flood it leaps to the startled heavens it smothers the sun it cries with scarlet voices of triumph from blossom and bough and blade see the bright horror of it it's roaring out of the skies and the whole red world is a welter oh god i'm afraid i'm afraid cornflowers you say just cornflowers gemming the golden grain ah oh, no you can't deceive me can't i believe my eyes look it's the dead my comrades stark on the dreadful plain all in their dark blue blouses staring up at the skies comrades of canting laughter dumb in the yellow wheat see how they sprawl and huddle see how their brows are white goaded on to the shambles there in death and defeat father of pity hide them hasten o god thy night lilies the light is waning only lilies you say nestling and softly shining there where the spear grass waves no my friend i know better brighter i see than day it's the poor little wooden crosses over their quiet graves oh how they're gleaming gleaming see each cross has a crown yes it's true i am dying little will be the loss darkness but look in heaven a light and it's shining down god's accolade lift me up friends i'm going to win my cross end of poem this recording is in the public domain a pot of tea by robert w service read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida you make it in your mess tin by the brazier's rosy gleam you watch a cloud then settle amber clear you lift it with your bayonet and you sniff the fragrant steam the very breath of it is ripe with cheer you're awful cold and dirty and a cursin of your lot you scoff the blushin half of it so rich and rippin hot it bucks you up like anythink 
just seems to touch the spot god bless the man that first discovered tea since i came out to fight in france which ain't the other day i think i've drunk enough to float a barge all kinds of fancy foreign dope from caffy and du lay to rum they serves you out before a charge in back rooms of estaminets i've gurgled pints of cham i've swilled down mugs of cider till i felt a bloomin dam but struth they all ain't in it with the vintage of assam god bless the man that first invented tea i think them lazy lumps o' gods what kips on ashfodel swigs nectar that's a flavor of oolong i only wish them sons o' guns a grillin down an ell could have their daily ration of souchong hurrah i'm off to battle which is ell and evan too and if i don't give some poor bloke a sexton's job to do to-night by fritz's camp fire won't i have a gorgeous brew for fightin mustn't interfere with tea to-night we'll all be tellin of the boches that we slew as we drink the giddy victory in tea end of poem this recording is in the public domain the revelation by robert w service read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida the same old sprint in the morning boys to the same old din and smut chained all day to the same old desk down in the same old rut posting the same old greasy books catching the same old train oh how will i manage to stick it all if i ever get back again we've bidden good-bye to life in a cage we're finished with pushing a pen they're pumping us full of bellicose rage they're showing us how to be men we're only beginning to find ourselves we're wonders of brawn and thew when we go back to our sissy jobs oh what are we going to do for shoulders curved with a counter stoop we'll be carried erect and square and faces white from the office light will be bronzed by the open air and we'll walk with the stride of a newborn pride with a new-found joy in our eyes scornful men who have diced with death under the naked skies and when we get back to the dreary grind and the bald-headed bosses call don't you think that the dingy window blind and the dingier office wall will suddenly melt to a vision of space of violent flame-scarred night then oh the joy of the danger thrill and oh the roar of the fight don't you think as we pedal a card of pins the counter will fade away and again we'll be seeing the sandbag rims and the barbed wires misty gray as a flat voice asks for a pound of tea don't you fancy we'll hear instead the night wind moan and the soothing drone of the packet that's overhead don't you guess that the things we're seeing now will haunt us through all the years heaven and hell rolled into one glory and blood and tears life's pattern picked with a scarlet thread where once we wove with a gray to remind us all how we played our part in the shock of an epic day oh we're booked for the great adventure now we're pledged to the real romance we'll find ourselves or we'll lose ourselves somewhere in giddy old france we'll know the zest of the fighter's life the best that we have we'll give we'll hunger and thirst we'll die but first we'll live by the gods we'll live we'll breathe free air 
and will bivouac under the starry sky will march with men and will fight with men and will see men laugh and die will know such joy as we never dreamed will fathom the deeps of pain but the hardest bit of it all will be when we come back home again for some of us smirk in a chiffon shop and some of us teach in a school some of us help with the seat of your pants to polish an office stool the merits of somebody's soap or jam some of us seek to explain but all of us wonder what we'll do when we have to go back again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Grand Pearl by Robert W. Service. Read for LibriVox.org by Joshua Cabana. And so, when he reached my bed, the general made a stand. My brave young fellow, he said, I would shake your hand. So I lifted my arm, the right, with never a hand at all, only a stump, a sight fit to appall. Well, well, now that's too bad. That's sorrowful luck, he said. But there! You give me, my lad, the left instead. So from under the blanket's rim I raised and showed him the other, a snag as ugly and grim as its ugly brother. He looked at each jagged wrist. He looked, but he did not speak, and then he bent down and kissed me on either cheek. You wonder now I don't mind I hadn't a hand to offer. They tell me you know I'm blind. T'was Grand Père, Joffrey! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sun by Robert W. Service, read for LibriVox.org by Maria Fatima da Silva. He hurried away, young heart of joy, under our Devon sky, and I watched him go, my beautiful boy, and a weary woman was I. For my hair is grey, and his was gold, he'd the best of his life to live. And I'd loved him so, and I'm old, I'm old, and he's all I had to give. Ah, yes, he was proud and swift and gay, but oh, how my eyes were dim. With the sun in his heart he went away, but he took the sun with him. For look, how the leaves are falling now, and the winter won't be long. O oh boy, my boy with the sunny brow, and the lips of love and of song. How we used to sit at the day's sweet end, we two by the firelight's gleam, and we'd drift to the valley of let's pretend on the beautiful river of dream. O oh dear little heart, O oh wealth untold, would I gladly, gladly pay. Could I just for a moment closely hold that golden head to my grey? For I gaze in the fire, and I'm seeing there a child, and he waves to me. And I run, and I hold him up in the air, and he laughs and shouts with glee. A little bundle of love and mirth, crying, Come, mumsy dear. Ah, me, if he called from the ends of the earth, I know that my heart would hear. Yet the thought comes thrilling through all my pain. How worthier could he die? Yea, a loss like that is a glorious gain, and pitiful proud am I. For peace must be bought with blood and tears, and the boys of our hearts must pay. And so in our joy of the after years, let us bless them every day. And though I know there's a hasty grave with a poor little cross at its head, and the gold of his youth he so gladly gave, yet to me he'll never be dead. And the sun in my Devon lane will be gay, and my boy will be with me still. So I'm finding the heart to smile and say, O oh God, 
if it be thy will. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.